Hey everybody, Liam here. So a funny thing happened uh, while I was editing this week's show, getting ready to post it. Uh, New Japan Pro Wrestling announced the departure of Kazuchika Okada from their promotion. Uh, he will be leaving after January 31st, which is the last day of his contract. Also my birthday, by the way. And uh, they, uh, in their statement, the company apologized for the abrupt nature of the announcement but they did uh, wish Okada well. And uh, Okada also had his own statement where he said, I have nothing but gratitude for his time there, uh, being a part of New Japan Pro Wrestling since 2007, and for New Japan bringing him from a 19-year-old kid off the plane in Mexico to the rainmaker he is today. He thanked the company, he thanked his opponents and the fans, and uh, promised to make it rain in every match he has left. So keep watching, he, uh, he instructed the fans. So uh, obviously this is going to be a huge story that we will uh, probably <laughs> delve into in a lot greater detail next week on the show. But uh, since I hadn't posted the episode yet, thankfully, I figured I would just hop on here, acknowledge it. It's a big, big story. Okada is without a doubt the biggest star in Japanese wrestling and has been for over a decade and his leaving will be a seismic shift for New Japan, which has just built built their entire company around him for the better part of a decade. So uh, it's it'll be uncharted waters for him, as it appears he is on his way to working full time in the United States. And it will be uncharted waters for New Japan as a company, as they uh, as they look to build around someone else going forward. Maybe it's time for Master Watto to finally get his due. We can only hope. But uh, yeah, we'll have more details on this, I'm sure, by the time we uh, we next record an episode. But like I said, I just wanted to hop on here and uh, acknowledge this gigantic bomb of a news story that dropped uh, just literally just minutes after we had re- uh, finished recording. So thanks, everybody, for listening. And uh, without further ado, let's get to the regularly scheduled episode. Thanks. Damn it! How long have we been doing this show? The Wrestling Life. Hey, everybody. It's The Wrestling Life. It's episode 361. It is our first, I don't know, live show, new show, uh, current show, uh, topical show of 2024. Happy New Year. I'm Ethan. Welcome back, Crab fans. I'm Liam. Liam, we have so much to talk about this week. And as always, so many things we cannot talk about on the first and only wrestling podcast. How was your New Year's, pal? Oh, it was good. It was, uh, it was pretty pretty quiet. I saw I saw people like all around the holiday, but didn't actually do much on uh, on New Year's Eve night. Which uh, is fine. Like I like, I kind of like going out on New Year's, but also uh, I've I've gotten to the ripe old age of thirty, and so at like twelve oh one, when I am already in my house and uh, and everything, I'm like, this was a good decision because <laughs> none of you know, none of my friends really are are like you know, party till three a.m. People, we barely were in our twenties, but we're certainly not now. So, uh, yeah. So it was nice. It was quiet. And uh, I was off. I had some some time off uh, in between Christmas and New Year's. So we're uh, here. We are refreshed and recharged, uh, ready to talk about uh, Ginger Mahal and Hook. I guess sounds sounds wonderful. Well, that was the happy talk portion of our broadcast. <laughs> now <laughs> the wrestling talk portion. Now it's time for a reward. <laughs> <laughs> Saturday is treat day (laughs) for 24 hours eat as much as you can (laughs) the brian butterfield diet (laughs) oh look it up folks it's good it's in the book it is quality um so we're on the road to several pay-per-views here wwe has royal rumble coming up nxt has vengeance day coming up uh, the week after that, and then uh, um, AEW is building towards the Sting retirement match at AEW Revolution in the first week of March, and it's all very exciting shows. Mm-hmm. Um, each show has a hook. One show literally has a hook. 
Um, <laughs> I don't know. So WWE did a a a a world title match on Raw this week in uh, setting up for. Uh, uh, I'm not sure why. Um, mm-hmm. They were going against an NFL playoff game. I think they felt like they needed uh, some kind of a reason for people to tune in. And um, and so they booked Seth Rollins against Jinder Mahal, who was a former WWE champion, who got um, emasculated and and left laying by The Rock uh, earlier this year, and mm-hmm. in the early front runner for worst segment of the year. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, you're not a Dwayne guy. No. We know this. We know this. I'm sorry, did you enjoy when he sang a Weird Al version of the National Anthem and and pretended to be talking to the deceased Iron Sheik's ghost? Was that fun for you? <laughs> Look, Dwayne as a person, I think, is one of those weird robot people <laughs> like John Cena or Tom Brady mm-hmm. now, where they only exist to try to sell you products, mm-hmm. usually that they've developed or have a financial interest in. And whatever real person was there uh, went away a long time ago. Mm-hmm. Uh, but generally, I do like Dwayne's wrestling segments. Okay. Um, I don't think this was a particularly uh, strong one. <laughs> um, I'm not sure I really uh, remember the last particularly strong. I guess I liked the SmackDown one that he did with McAfee and Theory and mm. whoever else. No, no, I guess no. I I, don't, I guess that segment didn't do a lot for me to answer your <laughs> to answer your question in the most long winded way possible. Fair enough, though we did get uh after twenty painstaking minutes, we did get to what will probably be a be- very big deal in the coming months here with him teasing uh the match with Roman on television for the first time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but uh, anyway, Ginger and Seth was the hook. For, uh, for Raw this week, and uh, Seth hurt, hurt his knee. We haven't heard more about that, which I would assume no, no news is good news. But uh, he hurt his knee trying to drag a leather recliner named Jin- <laughs> Jinder Mahal to a two-and-a-quarter star match in the mm-hmm. main event of Raw. Eh! And the rating was about the same as it was a week ago against the college football championship game. So I would consider uh, the raw rating this week okay, uh, and uh, but I feel for uh, poor Seth who had to uh, hurt himself trying to get a match out of Jinder Mahal. What did you think of all of this? Yeah, uh, well, I would say worth noting Seth uh, has had two uh, big knee injuries in his career. One was wrestling Kane, one wrestling Jinder Mahal. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah. Not work great, guys. No one can say the man does not put put his all <laughs> into into trying to get something uh, w- usable out of guys who are are not very good. For sure. But, um, yeah, the match itself was it was it wasn't very good <laughs> because Ginger's not very good, and also appeared to be incredibly uh, gassed. To be fair, I'm just guessing he hasn't had a 15 minute wrestling match in several years <laughs> so it may not be entirely... like seven years yeah yeah probably mm-hmm. not his fault entirely um but uh you know could could barely get his foot on the ropes for the the one spot where he didn't uh whatever the near fall they did there um so i did i thought he looked uh bad and uh probably but again i feel bad for him in the sense that they put him in a position where he was not uh, not given a lot of chances to succeed. Uh, nobody thought he was going to win. He was not in the physical shape to have a match like this. And uh, as a result, and he and Seth don't just didn't really feel like they had, a, they did not like instantly gel as a great, uh, as a great wrestling duo. So it was uh, a lot working against them, but uh I don't know. They're they're still teasing that the uh, priest is going to cash in the briefcase on Seth every week, and we don't we don't really have a lot of time left for them. I assume Seth is defending the belt against somebody at the pay per view. Mm. They really, but they haven't really set that up. If if he is, 
Right. Well, the um, alternative is he's not on the show or in the Rumble, and it doesn't make any sense for him to be in the Rumble. He's, he's, they're going to Chavo Guerrero him? <laughs> I, I don't understand. I don't know. There's only... Okay, and I don't have a problem with this, by the way. I'm just, just saying. Mm-hmm. I actually like this a- approach. There's six guys and four girls announced for the Royal Rumbles match, mm-hmm. Royal Rumble matches so far. Cool. Okay, so we're going to have... Say that number gets to 10 and 8 or whatever. Mm-hmm. So we're going to have 20 or uh, 22 surprises at... Uh... Okay, great. <laughs> you don't have to announce... You know the stars are going to be in there, Mm -hmm. and then there's going to be a lot of filler, and that's fine, but don't announce the filler, and then you'll have one or two surprises that are legitimate surprises, and and that's fine. Uh, You have the Roman match, and Logan Paul and Kevin Owens, I'm sure, are going to like jump off everything in Tropicana Field. Owens is going to go up on the big orange uh, (laughs) on the outfield wall. Or uh, past the outfield wall there and and jump off of it or something. That they'll kill themselves trying to have a good match. They'll suplex each other into the ray tank. Yes, exactly. Uh, that's the saddest looking ray tank in the world, by the way. It's a. It, I've been to that stadium. It's not good. Like <laughs> it's, it's got no no atmosphere at all to it. <laughs> it absolutely bizarre. I th- I thought they were finally gonna get that team out of there and into <laughs> Mon- into Montreal and then it's like I think a stadium deal kind of like came together <laughs> at the end of last mm-hmm. the last season for the race and so, well I guess we're still going to have two teams in Florida <laughs> <laughs> a place that has never supported professional baseball <laughs> mm-hmm, mm-hmm. absolutely bizarre uh yeah so that's our Tampa Bay Rays tangent um <laughs> I don't even know where I was going. Yeah, yeah, I don't know who Seth. I just assume he's not on the show because uh, now he's hurt and there's it's a week away. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. unless Priest like cashes in ahead of time, which would be weird to do because he's a heel. Um, or Priest cashes in on Seth this Monday and then they rematch at the pay per view. It doesn't seem like there's much time left to set anyone else up for it. Although again, they just kind of picked Ginger out of thin air and made him the champion. So he could just, you know, decide he's going to wrestle. Uh, what's the bald? <laughs> what's the Lonnie bald Donegan. The, the bald Imperium. Lonnie Donegan. Yes. He could always wrestle Lonnie Donegan at the pay-per-view. Always a possibility. It's Giovanni, Giovanni Vinci. Right. But, and he's out hurt. Oh, that's right. <laughs> okay. So, um, uh... So announced for the men's rumble, Cody Rhodes, CM Punk, and those two are going to have a face-to-face confrontation on uh, Raw this week, where they'll fake shoot on one another, mm-hmm. and uh, it'll be entertaining. And uh, Shinsuke Nakamura, Bobby Lashley, Drew McIntyre, and Gunther are the uh, entrants for the men's rumble match. And, uh, you know... I think Cody Rhodes or CM Punk wins it, but uh, Gunther would be the dark horse bet, I think. Yeah. Um, I guess somebody reported Brock's back soon, right? Yes. Um, and I just assumed it's Brock and Gunther at Mania because there isn't an ob- another obvious person to put Brock with. All right. Makes sense. But uh, so I could see them, I could see Brock being a surprise in the Rumble, perhaps. And then you do something, either he eliminates Gunther or vice versa to set up a a match for for me. Brock being the Intercontinental Champion would be funny also. (laughs) (laughs) That just sounds hilarious, honestly. So I'm (laughs) really talking myself into it now. (laughs) Yeah, that sounds cool. Although I also imagine Brock just not wanting to take those chops. Remember that time wow. he put, remember that time he punched Braun right really hard in the head because Braun need him too hard? Yes. <laughs> yes. He decided he was gonna have a shoot fight with Braun Strowman and not clue Braun in. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh okay. So uh, the other big thing from Raw in my mind, uh they teased 
Becky Lynch and Rhea Ripley for WrestleMania, and I assume all along that that's been the match because they haven't done that match in the last year. <laughs> and they, they've expressly and, kept uh, them apart, it feels like. Yes. And uh, they've had a... Uh, occasionally they'll stare at each other backstage, like not very subtle with the uh, the breadcrumbs here <laughs> and that's fine but um yeah so i would assume that means becky's not winning the rumble because <laughs> becky has also already won a rumble mm -hmm. um i think maybe bailey wins the rumble i don't know uh, and um she already said that uh, she would cash in on Rhea ripley and not eo sky if she wins the rumble but i think Maybe damage control does the turn there, and uh, and Bailey does end up wrestling EO Sky or or somebody like that. Uh, yeah, so I think Bailey wins the rumble. I think Becky has to go through the elimination chamber to get there, and uh, the elimination chamber is in Perth, Australia next month. We know CM Punk's going to be there. Hope somebody picks him up from the. So I would assume. <laughs> Yep, 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 yep. Uh, Roman Reigns is not on that show. Mm -hmm. Um, so I guess the speculate, I guess the Australian government isn't getting Dwayne, or maybe they're getting Dwayne for a promo, uh, such your DVR. Um, maybe he'll send in a phone video, uh, by, by his, his lake where he endorsed, uh, <laughs> Joe Biden and also shot Ken Shamrock's TNA Hall of Fame speech. He has a farm in Virginia. Mm -hmm. and he has a, uh, a a a a pond there that he keeps stocked with largemouth bass. Mm. Dwayne has had a farm in Virginia for a long time. Oh, that's that's nice. That's good. It's good to stay pretty up. close to Washington D.C. Connected. Yeah, it's good to stay connected to uh to the real America. You know, I suppose just in sure. case. Yeah. He's always had political aspirations. Mm -hmm. And now he wears glasses sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> Very serious. Uh, we've mentioned maybe off the air, maybe on the air. When Dwayne Johnson wears glasses, it's like a dog wearing clothes. Yes. <laughs> and speaking of which, um, I saw Orioles manager Brandon Hyde today. Uh, a video of him from the opening of the Orioles' new Dominican Republic Academy. Mm -hmm. And uh, Brandon Hyde, uh, when he's not wearing a baseball uniform or athletic wear of some kind, also looks like a dog wearing clothes. <laughs> and uh, he was wearing a suit at the opening of the Orioles' R Republican, uh, uh, Dominican Republic, not Republican, good Lord. <laughs> Dominican Republic, although I've heard things about Mike Elias, though. Uh, his, uh, uh -huh. The Orioles' Dominican Republic uh, Training Academy, and Brandon Hyde was wearing a suit and looked like a dog wearing clothes. <laughs> oh, it's the best. It's just... <laughs> We will we yeah. will continue to hopefully add uh, <laughs> people to this list of. <laughs> yeah. Hey, let us know who looks like a dog wearing clothes when they wear X article of clothing. Exactly. Let us know. Please. At TWL underscore podcast. Let us know. Yeah. Samoa Joe a little bit last week wearing that suit. A little bit. A little bit. Yeah. I guess we've talked about most of the WWE stuff now, so I guess we can trans uh, transition there into a, a seamless transition from Dwayne Johnson and Brandon Hyde wearing clothes into uh hook challenging Samoa Joe for the AEW world title on dynamite this week. Mm -hmm. People seem to enjoy the match. It was their best 1849 rating in four months. Mm -hmm. Samoa Joe and hook for the world title in the main event. What'd you think of the show? Uh, ups and downs. <laughs> Stop me if you've heard that before. Uh, but no, I thought the main event was exactly what it should have been. I thought you gave Hook enough where he was not hurt in taking the loss, but you also gave Joe a very dominant win. Um, so, and I thought I thought that was great. And then, yeah, the rest of the show was there was a there was a there was an old dudes rock match with Christian and and Dustin. 
um, and and a, the not that anyone could care, but the ROH six man belts changed hands, and uh, and they yeah, I mean they they've set up some other stuff for for down the road. They made it clear that Sting and Darby want to win the tag titles before Revolution, so one would think that that impending match with the Bucks is probably for the belts. And uh, yeah, they've they've set they've set some stuff up for either the next couple of weeks of television or the pay per view, and then you have in some combination Joe's next two challengers with with Swerve and Hangman waiting in the wings after he uh, took care of Hook. Yeah, there is that. Um, I thought Sting and Darby that Sting and Darby video was was great. Mm-hmm. But then deciding that they want to win the tag titles sometime in the next five weeks, I thought it was weird. Like, it's fine. I just thought it was weird. It kind of came out of nowhere. Yeah, I mean, to their point, he's like, we've never been beaten as a tag team. And it's like, that's true. But I would then posit, why uh, Why didn't you want to win the tag titles like a year ago? <laughs> yeah. All right. Any time in the last three years. Yeah. <laughs> why? Know. Why isn't that the first thing he did? Right. Uh good question. So maybe maybe they yeah. feel like if it's a, a, a world championship match will mean will mean or they want to give Sting one last belt before he's done. It's fine. It's yes, it is kind of you would have thought maybe like Ricky and Bill make the make the challenge and then they accept first, maybe. Rather than it being like a suddenly stated goal by, by the uh, by the baby faces to do this, um, Nicholas and Matthew Jackson, <laughs> two tremendous professional wrestlers, the mm-hmm. Young Bucks, that make me blind with rage anytime they're doing anything that isn't wrestling inside a wrestling ring. <laughs> Their promo this week, it was cute. <laughs> it was, it was. It was a cute skit. It uh-huh. was a cute little skit they did. Um, I don't think they're very good at that aspect of pro wrestling, which is anything involving characters or speaking extemporaneously for longer than four seconds or things like that. But congratulations to you because you've been banging the drum for three years that you want to see Sting and Darby wrestle the Young Bucks, and now you're going to get it. That's right. And uh, here's a scoop. I bought tickets for the show. Man. So. Greensboro, yep. North Carolina. That's right. Driving in, driving out. <laughs> yeah. What kind of drive is that for you? It's like five and a half hours, I believe, when I looked it up. Oh, well, it's not too bad. Yeah. My- for some reason, I was thinking like seven, but okay. Yeah. That's. I mean that was from my house to the to the Greensboro Coliseum. To be fair, I don't know. No, that's I, fine. I haven't yet yeah. figured out a place. To, you know, if I end up staying <laughs> tonight or something, but sure. But yes, that uh, that match excites me. Um, the them being um, abusing their power to try to rid AEW of old guys from WWE. Um, it's a bit on the nose, but. Um, <laughs> I like it because it's melting the brains of the worst people in the wrestling pundit sphere. Sure. Um, and those people uh, are the worst. And so I'm glad. Generally speaking, I look to what uh, those people are furious about. And uh, I, I think the opposite most of the time. So um i would you know does them being evil evps who want to retire sting because he's not a you know a, an indie wrestler <laughs> because that's what AEW was founded on eh you know i don't know if that makes it any better or worse than if you just announced the young bucks who are probably the best tag team of their generation or one of blah, blah, blah. Don't yell at me. And, and they're, they're going to wrestle Sting and Darby. If you just did that, would it mean more? I mean, the, the tickets are moving really well for that show still. And they like, they've opened up more or whatever, but like they're, you know, do they need to do this? I don't know. <laughs> probably not, but 
uh, you know, it makes the worst people on earth mad. So that's that's reason enough. Spite is a good enough reason for me to uh, to do this angle, even if it doesn't actually uh, result in anything uh, additionally positive for the show. So what else is going on in AEW? Uh, you mentioned Bullet Club Gold won the ROH six man titles. Boy, been a pretty quick steep decline for Mr. Jay White. <laughs> Boy, oh boy. Who misses the Continental Classic more than Jay White right now? Yeah, no, nobody. <laughs> Absolutely no one. Well, they're they're doing something with them and uh and the acclaimed. Uh maybe yeah. Yeah. a charitable would be that they're gonna unify so they don't have two sets of six band belts. Um but they have two sets of every other belt, so I don't know why well, why not just have six other six man belts too? But Right. Um, that was what I thought. I was like, oh, maybe they're going to do a, a unification match with with the acclaimed down the road or something. Which I mean, that's fine. It's something for all of those people involved to do. Yeah, but it's not a, a main event program following uh, following Jay's world title feud with MJF and his Continental Classic run. Swerve Strickland and Magnum TA. I mean, Hangman Page <laughs> are still positioned as kind of the next challengers for Samoa Joe. Mm -hmm. And I know, I think Hanger does have a win over Swerve. He beat him not in a Texas death match towards the end of last year sometime. Did he beat him at the, the, the show where the Rated R Superstar Adam Copeland debuted? The Seattle yeah, one? Yeah, I believe. Yeah, I think that's right. Wrestle Dream with uh, honoring Antonio Inoki song. Right, honoring Anoki san with Edge. <laughs> Stupid. He would have, no a slapped. new era for AEW is going to dawn. Noki would have slapped Edge Sony and Edge for that. <laughs> Rose out of the grave, slap both of them. <laughs> Tony was still wearing his scarf after the next pay per view, too. By the way, yeah, he, uh, he did ditch it for the last thing, but. Ugh. Anywho, um, I have no idea where I was going with that. Anyway, if I, I, know, I was going to say, if I were Swerve, I would say, why is Hangman uh, still hanging around? I <laughs> brutally just asked mm -hmm. <laughs> a month ago. I'm next in line. Like, why is Hangman still? Why are Hangman and Swerve equals in this? <laughs> I think that's my question. That's fair. Uh, you probably, yeah, you should probably have. Uh, hangman pin swerve in some way if you were gonna after the, the Texas death match um, it's it's interesting and so one of our listeners uh, uh, inquired about this because in hangman's promo he talked about this week he doesn't care about swerve he only cares about the belt which I think is supposed to be a lie I think he does care about swerve because they had a brawl like two weeks ago and he was screaming you will never get it. You will never have it. So I think he's more there just to keep Swerve from winning it. But that doesn't explain yeah. why like Joe would give Hangman a title shot or why the the vaguely defined uh, championship committee, such as it is in, in All Elite Wrestling in 2024, would, would declare him a, a winner. But then again, they also do just random battle royals where like, Brody King gets a title shot sometimes. So, or Hook just gets a title shot. So, although, although to be fair, they did bring up Hook's winning percentage as a as a reason for him getting the first title shot. So, um, yeah, I think probably you need to give Hangman a big. He did beat Claudio on television recently. Like he has singles wins on television, just not over Swerve. So, it should probably Swerve should probably at least bring up the fact that he is more deserving of the shot. <laughs> In AEW's women's division, uh, they've signed Deanna Perazzo, mm -hmm. who, by all accounts, is a very nice woman mm -hmm. who has endeared herself to the wrestling media by leaking things to them <laughs> and gets more run than her level of stardom because she's friendly with media outlets. That's my take on Deanna Perazzo. 
I think she, her matches have been good so far mm-hmm. in AEW. I think maybe there needs to be a little bit more there. There, that's all I'm saying. That's Please right. don't yeah. throw tomatoes at me. <laughs> I um yeah I I'll be honest. I have seen very little of her work because she wrestled in Impact. <laughs> And who watches Impact sure. <laughs> besides wrestling reporters that are paid to cover it? Uh, I've heard, yeah, I've heard very good things. I've liked what I've seen so far as far as her her wrestling work. Uh, the first promo with her and Mariah May in her home state was was okay, was all right. Um, but yes, look as as just setting up another challenger for Tony, I would assume to beat fine yeah and as a building block for the division because she's experienced and has worked a few different places and has worked in japan a little bit and all of this stuff like yeah absolutely bring her in but um do i see her being like a long-term top of the top of the women's card piece uh probably not but um yeah whatever just you, you, she's the new girl currently she's in the spot that ruby was in like two years ago like she comes in and it's a big deal they try to make her signing a big deal but ultimately we kind of know where she's gonna get slotted by the end that's fine um i do feel like maybe they are gonna beat tony with her but <laughs> they they seem they seem rather enamored with both of those people right now by the way uh tony and diana well, but. the good news that I think we've learned over the years w- watching Antonio Khan's uh, <laughs> King of the Women's Division um, is that uh, you don't ha- you don't have to be the champion to be the most pushed out. <laughs> so Tony losing the belt uh, will probably not affect her television time whatsoever. <laughs> so no need to worry there. No, it's great. Uh, Tony was absolutely amazing on commentary this week. Again, I don't know if it's a world champion um, character, mm-hmm. but as something that uh, entertains me, uh, Ian Riccoboni was on commentary instead of Tony Schiavone this week, and mm-hmm. she just treat, treated him as if he were Schiavone and was like feeding him uh, uh, cookies and telling him he never looked better now that he's clean shaven and dropped so much weight. Mm-hmm. And just like <laughs> caressing his head and stuff. <laughs> And Rick Rick Aboni just sold it perfectly. Mm-hmm. He's just like eating the cookies and it's like his mouth's full so he can't talk or <laughs> he's like staring at her like she's a crazy person, but he's too afraid to do or say anything. Mm-hmm. Uh, Rick Aboni was absolutely tremendous on Dynamite. Absolutely. Yeah, this this act is a lot of fun. Like I, I, like <laughs> I, I probably have been harsh on it because she is the champion and I don't think she's figured out how to have good Tony Storm wrestling matches while still doing the gimmick yet. <laughs> and maybe she will in, in time. But that's the thing to me. It's like, so if she's just, she, she can be a part of this wonderful variety show known as AW Dynamite. <laughs> There's definitely a place for her and her, her wacky antics. So coming up on Rampage this week, we have Darby Allen and Jeff Hardy. Mm-hmm. Jeff Hardy, by the way, I would put on House Arrest. <laughs> After that match, <laughs> like keep him away from all substances, keep him away from all motor vehicles. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Uh, just seems like a really bad idea to match those two guys up. <laughs> and stop me if you've heard this. Apparently, they had a crazy match. <laughs> yeah, I mean that's what you'd uh, what you'd expect. But um, I uh, Matt Hardy's getting divorced. <laughs> <laughs> to talk about, <laughs> I have nothing positive or negative to say about the Hardy Boys because they haven't been on television in a while. So I haven't, other than Rampage, which right. is a show that can just kind of wash over you because it's an hour and it kind of moves at a clip. So even if something not interesting or bad is happening, it'll be over pretty quickly. So, um, but uh, yeah, the Hardy the Hardy Boys. I don't know what else you do with them than bring them out and beat them. <laughs> At this point, I mean, I guess I guess I guess when you eventually get to the uh, Edge and Christian reunion, you probably have to or would want to keep the Hardy Boys around to do something with that. Yeah, that sounds like a bad idea, but something that you have to do, even though it's a bad idea. Yep. So 
Yeah. So get ready to jump off a ladder again, Jeff. Yeah. Adam Copeland is uh, hanging around and doing open challenges on Collision now. He's wrestled um, Griff Garrison mm -hmm. and um, I forget who he is. Uh, Tiger Style. Uh, Lee Moriarty. Yeah, so uh, Adam's having fun on uh, on his show now, his Saturday show. Mm -hmm. He's uh he's in the he's in he's in the fill spot now. Yeah, he's there to work work with all the youngins and teach them how to grab a hold. Yeah, and uh, yeah, that's. <laughs> I guess eventually they got to do another match with him and Christian based on how the last one went, but. Uh, I guess maybe they want to hold off building that more aggressively until they're closer to the next show. I what suppose. A, what a rib on me. <laughs> Buying tickets and driving five hours, and they're definitely going to do an Adam Copeland match. It's going to go like 45 <laughs> minutes on that show. It's in his home state of North Carolina. Oh, that's his family's right. going to be there. Lives in the mountains. Mm -hmm. Best contract up yet? Um, Not sure. I would keep I would keep an eye on it though. Mm -hmm. Tell you what, let me. Um, I'm usually pretty negative on AEW. Let me say, mm -hmm. uh, what? Let me say, Collision, the last two three weeks, the main events with FTR and the House of Black guys. They did a they did a tag match one week, mm -hmm. and then they did a six man with House of Black against FTR and Danny Garcia this past week. Uh. Just absolutely tremendous stuff. And as absolutely. personally as personally grating as FTR are, like they make me so angry sometimes as people <laughs> that it's absolutely shocking to me when I'm able to put that aside to really enjoy their work. It they, is possible, isn't that funny? Like it is guys, you can still be like, oh no, they're still really talented. They Not they've everybody been, <laughs> they've been tremendous the last two weeks. Those oh, yeah. matches have been awesome. Absolutely. They've they're and the House of Black too. Like mm -hmm. no who who is a bigger opponent of spooky lore <laughs> bullshit in pro wrestling than I. But right. uh, you get those guys in the ring, just let them wrestle. Absolutely fantastic. Um and uh yeah, and I I, I really like that you're like, yeah, you know, I really don't like them. You don't like Dax. <laughs> right. Cash never says anything. Right. So how can Cash, you right. Cash, I mean, other than him pulling a gun on someone on the on the side of a highway in Florida well, for the biggest show in the company who, ever ran. Who among us hasn't pulled a gun on someone in a road rage incident? Well in Florida that's I'm pretty sure they cut umbilical cords with, with guns. But yeah um but yes like Cash never does anything or really says anything and doesn't tweet too often. But uh so right. But yes despite uh despite Mr. Dickhead's aka dax's uh uh online persona you you are able to compartmentalize that and appreciate how uh how much they they and house of black have torn the house down the tag match two weeks ago i think was pretty perfect mm -hmm. and then i think the six man they did with garcia this week i think it went about five minutes too long mm -hmm. excuse me Excuse me. That's like mild criticism. It's like the one the week before peaked at absolutely the right time. Yeah, they, they just kept doing finisher and kicking out of stuff, and they weren't like kicking out of the main finishers, but they were kicking out of the secondary finishers, mm -hmm. and each one built on the next. And it was like, as each as they kicked out of each one, I'm like, oh my gosh, I can't believe what are they going to do next to top that. <laughs> And they kept doing it, and then they finally hit something and went home, and it was perfect. And then this week, they just did, like, five minutes too much, but that's okay. <laughs> yeah, but there's... I feel like that's... If you get nothing else out of uh, out of Collision, there usually is one very good match on the show every week. And allowing FDR uh, and, and House of Black and Brian Danielson and whoever else to just wrestle all the time on that show is at least a way to make it less skippable than the rampage shows we were just talking about. Sure. There was also a battle of the belts show uh, this past Saturday. Mm -hmm. Chris Jericho has had, they had him wrestle like 95% of his match backstage and away from the people. That's weird. 
Yeah. Um, and then uh, this week, uh, Jericho did a uh, promo backstage where they were piping in noise. Mm-hmm. And then his match is on the tape show this week against Matt Seidel. Those two will wrestle th- for the first time in over 13 years. Uh, so they're keeping Chris Jericho away from the people so that the people don't boo him like they did at the pay-per-view. Uh-huh. Um, also, a couple weeks ago on Dynamite, they they played his music for a whole segment that he was in. Like yes. he's new Jack. Yes. Um, so here's my thing. We thank, thank heavens. We missed having to talk about all of the Nick Hausman, Chris Jericho, Twitter drama. Yes. Um, and we don't need to relitigate it here. If you're listening to this show, you know what happened and you've made up your mind. So I don't think we need to relitigate that side of it. But I will just say, even if you think Chris Jericho is completely undeserving of the scorn he is currently facing by a certain subset of fans, both online and in arenas. Even if you think he's the best guy around and did nothing wrong and, and all of that. If you are a booker slash promoter, at what point do you just go, well, people want to boo this guy and you turn him. (laughs) Like if he's not going to go away, if you're not going to send him home for a couple of months, and hope this dies down. At what point do you just do you just stop trying to fight the crowd? Because this is some real like 2016 WWE stuff to try to keep like tricking the crowd into cheering him or covering it up with piped in noise or playing his music really loud to drown out the crowd's reactions. Like this is just you're really like we're really overthinking this when it seems like you have one of two options here, which is turn him heel. Try to ride it out and hope hope people stop start stop uh, booing him or send him home. Like so, I guess you have three options. <laughs> Just yeah, seems... you you could fire him into the sun. Sure. Yeah, I guess... <laughs> four. <laughs> um, but I guess that's my my thought is like at what point you you can't hide from this forever. <laughs> I assume eventually he's going to wrestle on a live show in front of people again. So you need to make a decision about this and stop trying to like smoke and mirrors this. Something that I don't understand. And we've talked about a hundred times on this show when, for whatever reason, when he was stale in WWE Mm -hmm. after his uh, first hiatus, uh, when he came back in the end of 07 or 08, whenever that Mm -hmm. was. Jericho would go home if he got stale. He would follow. He, in many ways, has followed Hulk Hogan's playbook mm-hmm. and learned a lot from Hogan. And that he never says no to any media. <laughs> <laughs> and he knows when he's overstayed his welcome or when he needs to change something up. And he used to go home, and he has yet to go home <laughs> True. in AEW, except for the time where he got hospitalized in the UK and lost 40 pounds and came back with uh, nine apps. Mm -hmm. It's weird. If ever there was a time to go home, this would be the time to go home, I think. Do you get a sense that it could be because this is a contract year for them, for their ratings, or for their television deal, and he is someone who has some equity that a television executive who hasn't paid attention to wrestling in 30 years might have heard of and so you want his name you want him on your show be- for that reason i guess that's the best that, i mean I'm, I'm that's the best answer i can think of as to why you he he wouldn't either choose to take himself off television or tony wouldn't take him off television at this point right it's real weird man it's 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 all real weird. Uh yeah. I think we've covered AEW pretty well. NXT uh the first two title matches are official for their uh February 4th pay-per-view. Um Roxanne Perez will be uh challenging Lyra Valkyria for the women's title and Trick Williams whoop that trick mm-hmm. will be challenging Ilya Dragunov for the men's title. Um, and the Dusty Rhodes Tag Team Classic Finals will be there. And uh, 
it's looking like that the finals are going to be Baron Corbin and Braun Breaker against Carmelo and Trick, if I had to guess. Hmm. Is Trick's going to work twice on that show? Looks that way. Interesting. They might finally pull the trigger on Carmelo turning on Trick or Trick turning on Carmelo that they've been teasing for, I think, since the Obama administration. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, as someone who doesn't pay attention all of the time to NXT, even I'm aware that they've been building that for several months now. So that would uh, would suggest to me that maybe it's time to do that. And uh, poor poor Roxanne hasn't uh, hasn't graduated hip toss class yet, huh? Or not? <laughs> well, I'll, I'll say this about Roxanne: ninety nine times out of a hundred, you see her wrestle. She looks like she's been doing this her entire life. Mm -hmm. And they call her a prodigy and it kind of fits. And then one out of every 100 times, and maybe it's just whoever she's in. It's not her fault. It's whoever's the fault of whoever she's in there with. But mm -hmm. one out of every 100 times, you'll see her have a match that's real bad. Um, I don't know. I don't know. I, I, I don't. <laughs> certainly, I don't th know what else she's going to accomplish in hip toss class. <laughs> But maybe that's their thinking. I don't know. Look, if 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 you think or if they think she is going to be like a giant star, I can understand not wanting to rush it. The same thing with Tiffany Stratton. Or if you see them, if like this person's probably going to be, if things go well on our show for the next decade plus, right. then I can see not wanting to rush it and wanting to, you know, try to iron out any kinks before you you put her on the show that two million people watch sure uh uba femi is the nxt north american champion um the dude has had like 14 career matches or something um but he's got something um he's older than he we thought he was <laughs> according to his mother on instagram uh he was a track and field athlete at he definitely went to Alabama, but I think he transferred to Alabama from like Indiana or something. But uh, he like threw he was a thrower in track and field, he wasn't a track and field runner. Mm -hmm. He like threw the shot pot or the discus or something like that. But this dude, he looks like he could be your ass, and oh, yeah. and uh, and he has real good matches and uh. Uh, unfortunately, they haven't totally stereotyped him by giving him the pounce as a finish yet. Um, <laughs> uh, I think he, he uses the last, like a last ride as his finish, but, uh, he's cool and he's got something. Unfortunately, I think they've decided that he's a heel, hmm. uh, based on his promo segment on TV this week. And that's not cool because he should be baby face. Uh, but that's, that's all right. And, uh, yeah, I, I think they should give him the discus punch as his finisher. Ugh. Ugh. <laughs> uh Cora J tore ACL. That swishes. Mm -hmm. That sucks. Yeah, that's that's tough. There's you know, it's feels like it just I don't know what I'm saying here. That's fine. Um, she and Braun broke up, apparently. Oh yeah. Oh I wonder I wonder <laughs> what new elements have been introduced to Cora J's life, say starting like the week after survivor series that might have led to her breaking up with her with her long-term boyfriend it will remain a mystery i am sure it's fascinating look in my eyes what do you say <laughs> it's fascinating isn't it yeah just it's wild a hey, uh nick nemeth uh debuted in new japan and then uh debuted in tna uh-huh <laughs> dana brooke debuted for tna uh-huh uh i think it'll be she's doing it's probably not fair to say she's doing tony storm's gimmick but it certainly cosmetically looks like she's doing tony storm's gimmick sure um and ziggler i mean yeah where else was i mean i was concerned as we talked about <laughs> off the air because his brother works works for tony khan i thought it not impossible that uh that nick nemeth could come in to ring of honor or AEW, but the thing with a guy like nick is i feel like he isn't he isn't getting out of bed for the same price as his brother 
Right. So like if you, you if you got to really pay him to come in, you probably got to push him. <laughs> right. Thankfully, it looks like he's uh, he's made the choice to go to TNA where he can. Yeah, he could be he could be the world champion in TNA. That's fine. <laughs> there there are worse there are worse things sure um it yeah would be I, fascinating to see a guy that associated with world wrestling entertainment go wrestle anywhere else to me it maybe the most fascinating thing about it is that he's a guy who shouldn't need the money mm-hmm. and also hasn't seemed particularly invested in his work Mm-hmm. Over the last, oh, I don't know, 10 years. <laughs> so it's like, is he fired up now? Is he going to go out and want to show how good he is at 43 years old or whatever he is now? Like, <laughs> right. I don't know. To me, it's fast. It'll be fascinating to see. But fascinating, maybe too strong of a word. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be mildly interested to see. <laughs> That's right. Um, Let's see. Uh, New Japan. Uh, Naito got his gold watch run at the, the uh, yeah. Naito finally finished his story, did his roll call at the Tokyo Dome. I, I, uh, will, I will say the match between him and Sonata was exactly what you would expect, <laughs> as you pointed out to me. Um, I however, used to, I used that term as a pejorative, <laughs> uh, absolutely, and you are not wrong, <laughs> but when evil comes out to ruin Naito's roll call and the crowd is booing and everyone's mad and then Sonata jumps in from off screen out of nowhere and hits the shining wizard on evil and sends him packing so that Naito can do his roll call I was like that's perfect that was a perfect pro wrestling uh, moment and then Sonata's like in tears as he's walking up the ramp looking back at uh, at Naito as he does the roll call I was like that's that's wonderful That's that's a nice little payoff to there their LIJ history, even if it did have to involve evil and a not very good match to get there. <laughs> yeah. Um, New Japan ran in San Jose this past weekend. Uh, Jungle Boy jumped the jumped the rail. He's Jungle Man now. He's got a beard and everything. Yeah, the Jungle Man is uh, going to wrestle for NJPW apparently. Uh, Matt Riddle wrestled uh, on that show. For New Japan, mm-hmm. he uh, he challenged Tanahashi in a video at uh, a New Year Dash. Um, New Japan is returning to Chicago in April. They're running the big building, not the United Center, but uh, the Wind Trust there. And uh, Romu Takahashi is wrestling Mustafa Ali on that show, mm-hmm. and John Moxley is wrestling Naito, presumably for the title, but they can't say it's for the title yet on that show. They will not say it's for the title until approximately three days before the show. Right. Uh, at least they're announcing matches ahead of time now. True. Like and they, I mean, they whatever initial tickets they put on sale, I think they were pretty close to selling out of. So they'll probably get to open it up for even more. So hey, turns out that can uh, that can work. Yeah. 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 This the 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 San Jose show I think did did well uh, this past mm-hmm. week, but. Um, they didn't announce the full card until like four days before. <laughs> Oops, they announced Okada and Osprey, uh, <laughs> six days out maybe, and then the full card four days out. It's fascinating, classic. <laughs> um, Okada has filed uh to trade for a trademark with the U.S. Uh, patent office for Rainmaker. Mm-hmm. Seems interesting. Still think the most likely scenario there is uh, AEW New Japan both paying him dual custody, yeah, and uh, that dual custody probably works out to about six dates a year for AEW. <laughs> I hope they realize that when Tony's writing him a check, not that I care, but uh, yeah, and uh, I guess Osprey, Osprey is. We know he's going to AEW. I didn't realize that he's like done. done. He's like closing the door on New Japan. He's like saying, I'm done after this next tour. Um, Certainly seems that way. Yeah, he's the they're doing New Japan is going to do a war games. Yeah. Fascinating. 
<laughs> and uh, that'll that'll be it for for Osprey after that. So uh, interesting, I guess. I mean, I didn't expect him to, but, but obviously he's still going to be living in the UK, yeah, while working for AEW. So you it, you would have thought he could have still popped in, and maybe he will for Wrestle Kingdom next year or something. But he's certainly talking about it like he's he's done done for the time being. Yeah, he said his 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 match with Okada. Uh, in San Jose this past week, he said it was his last New Japan singles match. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Which kind of boggles boggles my mind a little bit. Um, and since we're talking about the where guys might go, uh, I still say that every week that Mercedes money doesn't show up in AEW, uh, we're one step closer to her returning at the Royal Rumble. And she went to impacts uh pay-per-view this past weekend with mm-hmm. Bailey and every week she's not on AEW TV we're a week closer to her coming back to WWE at Royal Rumble <laughs> they we, I forget when we last talked about this but WWE leaked last month like we're not negotiating with her anymore she asked for more money than gasp Charlotte Flair. They, they <laughs> threw a real hissy fit. <laughs> yeah. She asked for, she had the audacity to ask for more money than we paid Charlotte Flair. Mm-hmm. And uh, we expect her to be in AEW any moment now. And uh, people in AEW thought that she was coming in and she still hasn't come in. And I'm not saying she's not. I just think that what makes the most sense for everyone is for WWE to write her a large check. Yeah. I mean, like we said, it's, 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 a, it's a, it's a, when, not an if it's just, <laughs> does she take, does she want to take another two to three year detour before going back? Right. Um, so. The benefit, the benefit that she has is that she's like four years younger than all of the other horsewomen. Mm-hmm. She can take two, three more years. <laughs> True. Although, if you're if you're WWE and you want to do that that four way, yeah, you're. I mean, I don't know. <laughs> One of them is already a mom. Yep. And and writing her book and yep seems. I'm not gonna say check. I don't think she's checked out, but it seems like Becky. The way Becky talks about her career it seems like there is more of it behind her than in front of her at oh, least as a full-time wrestler 100 percent, 100 percent. and charlotte's dealing with a major injury and i don't i don't know if she wants to have children or not she's but, talked about she's talked about it but and yeah and i i again same thing with bailey who knows but they're right, right you're they're all and also we don't know like this in in a realist sense how long like every dude that gets pushed to WWE currently is like 44 so right. there's no reason that these women couldn't be on top for another 10 years if they wanted to right you would think but also sometimes those rules don't apply to women in on television or in the in, public eye until you see them do it you've never seen them do it Correct. so <laughs> even, right? even Trish's run last year was like it felt like we were treating it like, isn't it great how grandma can still, you know, drive herself to <laughs> to work oh, every day. My gosh. Like it felt like there was a little bit of that. That's so hurtful. <laughs> I'm not I'm not saying they should have done that. I'm just saying it's I, like I know. there was a little bit of of that <laughs> tacked on. Yeah, sure. Yeah, there was. <laughs> there definitely was. So yes, until until I have seen them push a woman in her forties as a full time star, <laughs> I that is also something to think about if you're WWE that you may have a ticking clock of how long you have to put together this match, which you kind of for your own historical purposes have to do. <laughs> right. So we'll see, <laughs> but I do think you're right. I think there every week that she isn't. <laughs> hasn't put pen to paper is another week that somebody could add a zero to a check or she could get wistful about all of her friends. Trinity is likely going to be back in WWE very soon. Yep. Obviously Bailey is there. Like there's, 
there's more and more reasons for her to go back on a personal level. The man who fired her and then viciously assaulted her character no longer <laughs> is he's off being a, a mascot for Saudi Arabian boxing matches now. <laughs> so like she's dealing with Uncle Paul and and Uncle right. Nick now. So yeah. There's plenty of reasons that you would think and more and more reasons for her to go back yep. uh, to WWE. So yeah, it's just a matter of uh just a matter of when. Yep. Um much like with Punk uh, about three weeks ahead of Survivor series. I'm like 51 to 60% sure she's going to be at the Royal Rumble. And uh, we'll see. The day of Survivor Series, I was like, there is a 11% chance Punk is going to be there tonight. <laughs> so we'll see how I feel the day of the Royal Rumble. But uh, yeah, right now, I would say 51 to 60% sure she's at the Royal Rumble. All right. Uh, I think we've covered the globe here. Is there anything else that uh, we need to get into that we haven't yet? No, I think that about wraps it up. All right. Well, till next time, everyone. I'm Ethan. And I'm Liam. We'll be back soon with more stories from the wrestling life. Bye-bye. Thanks for listening. Don't forget to leave us a five-star review on Apple Podcasts. Now, here are this week's bonus features. I re- I know sometimes I'm needling you when I <laughs> when I do sh- bits about Trish or yes one of your other girls. I really wasn't <laughs> that time. I promise. I I know it was. It's funnier if I if you I play. Think... No, absolutely. Right. It, was, it made for good pot. I just <laughs> I was like, of all the times I do it on purpose, the one of the better ones we've done is when I was doing it on accident. <laughs> right. right. When I was just being myself. Well, that felt pointed. <laughs> Well, I would say that she certainly certainly has the confidence of a much younger woman. <laughs> oh. First of all, how dare you? Second of all, how dare you? <laughs> oh, isn't it isn't it wonderful that she <laughs> Look, Mima Her... drove herself to the arena. <laughs> Mima figured out how to get on the plane. Yeah. Took a bump, didn't break a hip or anything. Ugh. That cage match. <laughs> she came out of that cage match looking like uh, she'd been in a real fight, and <laughs> Becky, Becky, sandpapered her eyebrow and then was uh, bound and determined to get Hardaway Juice. <laughs> she thinks she's McFoley. Why does she think she's McFoley? She's a much bigger. <laughs> Star, she has many more star elements than McFoley ever had. Agreed, but <laughs> can't Someone's... say she's a much bigger star than McFoley, but she yeah. has many more star elements than McFoley ever had, right? And to your point, the most success she ever had was not being the all, oh gee, I don't know if I can win, but I'll sure right. try <laughs> my best if I get a shot, like, right, doing this like old man Terry Funk. Going right. for the ECW title bit, it's like yes. <laughs> it's like no, you you were Steve Austin. That's why the, and you were Steve yes. Austin and Conor McGregor. That's how. That's why this worked. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, yeah. That's what she always defaults to now, and it's and and I don't think it's a good instinct. But hey, whatever, whatever. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, I guess I got to check in on uh, Ash by Elegance and Nick Nemeth here. Why is it Ash by Elegance? Shouldn't it be Elegance by Ash? Her name is her name is Ash, right? Yes. Uh, I don't have a good answer for you. <laughs> okay, that's fine. Uh, I, I don't know. We can we can reconvene at a later date, and you sure can, you can inform me about the finer points of Ash by Ash Elegance. by Elegance. Yep, I will do so. I try to keep on keeping on.